Okay, welcome back. And uh, I think we can do a short round of intro for those who just joined us and have not done an intro before. So, Adam, would you like to kick off with that? Sure. Um, my name is Adam Miller. I am on the Ansible engineering team, uh, specifically on the content engineering team. I focus mostly on uh, security automation integrations as well as Linux platform uh, automation integrations. Um, my personal, uh, you know, area in that is Fedora and RHEL. Um, but I, I try to try to do other Linux platforms as well as time permits. Um, yeah, that's. I guess that's it for. All right. Uh, you're you're on a nickname on IRC and GitHub. Oh, nickname on IRC and GitHub is Maximilian. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, George, did you just join us? If not, uh, Gondary. Sorry if, if I'm butchering your name. I was a good conversation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm Gondary on RSC. I go in Gondary everywhere on GitHub too. Um, and I, I work mostly on the VMware ecosystem for, for now. And I'm in the cloud team with Jill. So we are working together. Yeah, for, for my um, to the um, work, the cloud is VMware. Cool, thanks, Gonary. Let's see who else. Jill? I think yeah. you did an intro, but just, you know, again, just so, so that we can. Get yeah, that. totally. Um, so I'm Jill, I'm they, them, theirs, and I'm on the cloud team, uh, cloud content team with Gonary and Abhijit. And I focus primarily on the AWS collections. Thanks, Joe. Richard, are you around, Rick? Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Rick or Richard. Uh, I'm fairly new uh, as of a couple months ago to the uh, uh, Ansible base team, core team. Um, so still learning the ropes, still learning my way around, uh, but happy to help out in any way I can. And uh, Learning as I go, so go easy on me. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Sai Jadhav, I think you were on previously, but we haven't had a chance to hear from you. Hey, everyone. My name is Sai, and I have joined the Ansible Community Documentation Team as the Summer 2020 intern. I am currently being mentored by Sandra and Alicia, and I am right now focusing on identifying the web analytics to see how the documentation and content is being consumed by um, the people across the world. And there are some interesting statistics we have. And I'm also looking at uh, how we can modify the content and uh, um, adhere it to the writing guidelines and make it easy for consumption. That's wonderful. Thank you, Sai. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, is there anyone else I've missed and would like to do an intro? If not, I'll hand it over to Alicia and the documentation team for the next session. Cool. Thanks, Carol. Um, so in this session, uh, I, I think we have a bunch of people who um, who voted for it. Um, but I'll talk a little bit first about what I had in mind to discuss and post some resources for folks. So the move from um, the move to collections has been a big change. Um, and we and the docs team are taking an op this opportunity to um, take a step back and look at how we do docs and what's uh, what needs to change, what shouldn't change, um, and how we can best serve users and learners with the documentation. So I'll post just quickly 
some of the content that we have written about collections. That first link, oh, I should probably put these in IRC too. Um, in fact, I should put them in IRC instead of in the chat, perhaps. Um, okay, so docs, uh, boom, there's one. Um, so we have, we have basically one page each for the most part about contributing, developing, and using collections. There, I have posted them all in IRC. Um, okay, we have somebody in chat, George, saying, is there a presentation now? Yes, you should be seeing some pages from the documentation. Um, and I don't know how to fix that. It's probably maybe a blue jeans issue. Um, Alicia, would it be easy? Uh, are you sure? Would you want to share your, your screen instead? As it talks uh, I, I can, but I don't really have that much to say other than uh, I, I'd prefer to hear from folks rather than talk. Um, so, yeah, we, we have basic information out on uh, docs.ansible.com about contributing to collections, about developing collections, um, testing them, and so on, and also about using them. Um, and I'm eager to hear from people uh, whether they've used this documentation, if they've, and, and what they think about it, um, where they see gaps in the documentation, and, um, you know, what, what, what the community needs. I can also talk a little bit as we as we move along about the the future of docs and also about the module docs pipeline in the in the new world or folks have noticed is not currently up on the website um, but I would love to hear from folks who who has anybody used the collections documentation we have so far And I'm going to put these questions in IRC as well. I wanted to say that I have been using the collections docs a bit, and uh, mostly they're pretty good and up to speed. Uh, I think from, from a module builder's perspective, everything is there that I would ever want. Uh, the two things that I've actually seen people asking about a lot were roles and playbooks, especially since playbooks is mentioned at the top of that page. Like, oh, I can put playbooks in here, but then you go there and I think it's just to do or something like that. If possible, I don't know if there's even an open issue on Ansible, Ansible or somewhere. It would be nice to at least put in there, this is like something that will come someday, but right now is not anything. So I don't know, because I think three different people now have, when they started getting into collections, asked me like, so what is this playbooks thing? <laughs> and they're, they're usually excited about it. They're like, this would be really cool if I could put some sample playbooks or put a playbook that's the official one to deploy this, but then they, they have no idea what to do with it, so. There's an open PR for running playbooks from collections, but I don't think it made the cutoff for 2.10. So we need we need functionality in Ansible base to make that connection to make that work. Is that what we're saying? Sounds like it. I, I think the main thing then would be in the docs, maybe instead of just TBD, uh, put some maybe in our hackathon tomorrow we could get to this. Uh, put in uh, like playbooks will be supported in collections at some point in the future. Please follow this issue for progress or something along those lines. Yeah, that sounds great. So I see a question in chat from Andrew saying, where can we see module documentation that is in development now? Um, so from collections, uh, the answer to that is we hope maybe in the next week or two to have that up on the website. Um, we had to change 
the way the pipeline functions um, so that we would pull collections off of Galaxy and build, since we there are collections included there that are not part of Ansible GitHub presence at all um, that are going to be included in the Python packages. So we wanted to make sure that we would include everything and it was a fairly large change. Um, so that is not quite ready yet, but it's, it's uh, well underway. We've also been working in the in the documentation working group, which I encourage everyone uh, to join. We meet on Tuesdays at I believe 15:30 UTC, um, and uh, Felix has been doing Felix Fontaine has been doing some awesome work on pulling together change logs. That's another area where um, we used to um, be able to pull change logs from the single repository and it was fairly straightforward and in a collections universe it's a lot more complex um, so we are working toward an amalgamated change log and the beginnings of a porting guide for um, for future Python package releases that will include Ansible base and the included collections as well um, so yeah, we definitely, uh, if, if folks are interested in that, we welcome uh, contributions and participation, uh, and the Ansible Docs working group is a great place to, to start with that. Um, have a really cool logo and a great group of people and, um, Please, yeah, reach out to me on your platform of choice if you're interested in getting involved. So I've got uh, at least one. I, I, I'm going to fix the, or not I, we can fix the playbooks directory entry in that. Um, oh, thanks, Carol, for putting up the Docs Working Group page. Yay. Um, we can fix that playbooks directory entry and give people some more information and pointers. What else would folks like to see in the um, in the docs moving forward? Uh, Alicia, there's a question in IRC that might be worth covering. Um, Whoops. Oh. Had audio. I didn't actually check first. Excellent. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Should I generate docs and keep them in the repo? Um, so. We had a question before that. Same person. Oh. Hey, that was me. Ah. Well, I just wonder if I, what should I do as a maintainer for collection, for example, OpenStack collections that we have, and develop them in Garrett in OpenStack. What should we do to keep our docs in Ansible readable and, you know, up to date and not to have any issues with that? Should we generate them and to keep them in the repo? What are steps are required for us? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would definitely, we hope that um, as soon as the, the module docs are up on docs.ansible.com that you won't need to, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to put them in your repo in the built HTML. Um, okay. So that's, that's the first thing. I would encourage maintainers to build the docs locally um periodically and especially if you're doing if you have a, a CI pipeline and can add a quick docs build to it. Um, I think right now sorry I'm looking at IRC and at, and talking at the same time. I probably should stop doing that. Um, 
uh, now I completely lost my train of thought. I was talking about uh, building them locally so that you're sure you're not uh, triggering errors in the docs build. Um, and then yeah, I think it can be a test job in CI, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then? Um, we we don't currently have the right tools, I don't think, for that, but that is part of the pipeline work. Um, and if you have any extra cycles to contribute to that, that would be awesome. Oh, go ahead, Toshio. Yeah, um, right now we have uh, two subcommands for the docs build working. One which tries to build the stable docs by checking out, well, by downloading the current latest build of Ansible base and then downloading from Galaxy the versions of the collections that are going to be in the next version of Ansible. Um, for local testing, uh, Felix wrote a subcommand called current, which might be able to uh, work with a little bit of uh, extra scripting on the outside. What current does is it takes whatever is currently installed on your system and builds docs for it. So you could kind of coerce that into a CI pipeline by just installing base and the specific version, um, your, your, your collection. And then when current runs Ansible, ANSI build, um, docs, uh, current, then it would find your collection installed there and be able to generate the docs from that to confirm that they're working. Uh, I have plans for several other subcommands so that you could do things like specify a file, uh, but those have not been written yet because the, the main push is to get the doc site up and running. If you wanted to contribute to those, that would be great. Uh, Felix has a PR where he started work on some of that. We were just trying to figure out how to make it, um, how to make it all fit together. Like he has in his PR, he has current collection and current plugin. I'd like to see that functionality just become plugin and collection. You have to work out like how do we um, how do we make it so that you don't have to download the collection and download the plugin all the time if we uh, try and merge those together. If you have other questions that you want to ask about the, the scripts to build the docs and that part of the docs pipeline, uh, feel free to ask and I can answer whatever you want. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think maybe it's you know, worth to document documentation process. Somewhere with just a, you know, command line scripts, uh, what to use and links where to look for it. So I can like take my time and to go deep into this. After the um, summit, all these links will be in the uh, minutes of the IRC log, so you should be able to get. So I'm trying to make sure it, the links are also in the IRC channel, so you you have a list of all the links that we shared during the during this event. Cool, cool. Thank you. Carol, I've lost track of time. How much time do we have left for focusing on docs? Uh, 13 minutes. 13 minutes, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so something came up in IRC from Baptiste um, about uh, making the docs focus a little more on the different types of documentation users. So is this someone who's coming to the docs because they're a maintainer and they're looking for technical information? Is this someone who's looking for um, user information? You know, just I have this playbook and I need to add something to it. Um, or is this person 
um, developing, you know, different user types. Sorry, I'm doing that multitasking thing again. It's not my forte. Um, and those of you who've been in the Ansible community for a long time maybe remember that pre 2.5 release, um, the documentation was all in one big lump. Um, and when 2.5 was released, we created some um, subdivisions. We created the guides, uh, which is what's reflected in that left hand navigation bar of the document, the main documentation. Um, that was only the start of a movement away from um, documenting every uh, knob and switch from, from documenting products toward documenting user stories, toward documenting, um, toward orienting the documentation for a particular use case or persona. Um, and this is something that's, uh, it's, it's a complex um, evolution of content and particularly it's complicated by um, wanting to maintain our um, search engine optimization. We want to make sure that we keep users and um, links from the past with us as we move into the future. Um, but this is definitely a trend and we want to see it accelerate uh, as we continue down this collections path. Um, we're probably looking at some major reorganization of the documentation in the next year to 18 months. Um, and I would definitely encourage people to, you have ideas um, about how the docs could be organized, about particular use cases that we're not addressing right now. Um, if folks hear from people saying, you know, as, as the one that Gearling Guy um, reported about that, the documentation for collections containing playbooks being TBD, that's an extreme case, uh, both because it's very small and specific and also because I don't think we have that many TBD or, you know, under construction sections in the docs right now. Um, but if you have general ideas about, hey, you know, the docs could do a better job of helping people find this or that content or of helping the kind of user that I am or was um, and sharing whatever journeys you've been on to, to um, address your own use cases and how the docs could do better, please reach out. I completely lost track of the grammar of that sentence, but um, docs would love to hear from you. PR is always welcome. Join the uh, working group if you can and um, the lines of communication open. And as a reminder, um, we'll put all these links in the minutes, um, which will get sent out to everyone. Um, go in hash on spool dash docs and spool dash docs and free node, all the cool stuff. And yeah, we'll be doing a docs hackathon at 1400 UTC tomorrow in the Ansible docs channel. Are we done with the doc session? Is it time for the uh, bullhorn session? It's seven minutes to the scheduled time. You're the um, facilitator, so do you want to start right away, or we can take a seven minute we can take a seven minute break. Uh, okay, that's fine with me to stay on schedule in case anyone is wanting to come for this. All right, we'll be back in seven minutes. Hello. <laughs>
Greg, would you share your screen or should I just share the uh, bullhorn link? Just share the bullhorn link, that's fine. Okay. I'm currently uh, refilling my coffee cup. Coffee for the first couple of cups and then it was decaf. And because I can't have any more caffeine, I have to keep myself awake. So I'm now drinking hot water with copious amounts of Tabasco in it. That's my strategy. All right. How many people have actually seen the bullhorn? A quick uh, IRC poll or uh, Blue Jeans poll? Just curious who knows about it. A couple of plus ones, that's good. All right, so the purpose of the bullhorn, a little history. Purpose of the bullhorn is to be a developer newsletter, uh, really to get out things that we want to make sure that people see who may not necessarily be following Ansible Devel closely. Um, and we don't really have, uh, it's not really a sort of a goal for, uh, you know, marketing or gathering eyeballs or anything like that. It really is just purely a mechanism to keep the community informed, specifically the development community, about what's going on, important things that uh, you should know. Uh, that's the goal. Once upon a time, there was a, there was a, a great community newsletter made by Matt Jaynes. This is like 2014, 2015, back in the day, um, called, uh, I think it was uh, Briefs on Ansible or something like that. It was very cute. Um, can it be copied to Devel? Uh, yes, it could be. We can, I, I don't, Basically, I make sure it gets out, and then uh, Mark Phillips has been in charge of sort of deciding where it's uh, linked to. Carol is now taking over. So the goal is just to make sure it's as widely distributed as possible. And if we want to send it to Devel, that's fine. Help us with that. Um, so up here on the screen, you see basically that the outline for the first five issues while we were sort of figuring out what it was and getting it going. Basically, I had this uh, outline that you see some version of it uh, in our, our private Google Docs uh, just to get it launched. Uh, it's now a thing. Uh, more people are subscribing to it. Uh, I've heard good feedback about it, so thanks for that. Um, it seems to be uh, useful-ish. And so the next step is to make sure that the community knows about the process for contributing to it and maybe improving the process by which the community contribute to it, although uh, it's, it's really pretty Pretty simple by design and want to keep it that way as much as possible. Maybe this goes into a GitHub repo, maybe. I don't know. I just want to make sure it's uh, easy enough and, you know, people uh, can contribute to it easily. And right now we've just been asking in the body of the bullhorn, do you have uh, something you'd like to contribute? Just send an email and uh, we'll uh, consider it for the next uh, bullhorn. So that's the bullhorn. Question number one, is it useful? Question number two, what can we do to make it more useful? Question number three, is it the kind of thing that anyone would be willing to uh, help with? Those are the questions. I will wait for wise comment or complaints or offers to take it off my hands and do a better job. <laughs> All of these are things I'm waiting for.
little more info while I wait for that feedback. We try to put it out every two weeks. Uh, it's a three week lag right now because we would be putting it out by our current schedule. We would have been putting it out this Wednesday. I felt like it was uh, important to wait and give ourselves time to uh, put together the feedback from this contributor conference uh, and so that we wouldn't be putting together the bullhorn while we're doing the contributor conference because this is more important than that. So, and we try to get it out every two weeks. If it ends up going out every three mm -hmm. weeks occasionally, I'm okay with that. What help is required? Content. Content is always required. More content is always required. Um, you know what? No, no, that's actually not true. Content uh, that is about uh, Ansible, uh, the development process of Ansible, that's the content that we always want more of. So what content do I see being in this thing in the future? Um, updates for various working groups or collection groups would be super useful. Uh, ideally, this is the place where people go to get a high level view every couple of weeks of all the important things that are going on in the Ansible community. And as such, it's sort of on y'all to, to tell us what good things are being worked on and what things you want people to be paying attention to. Um, ideally, I would like to see every working group in Ansible updating the bullhorn on a fairly regular basis. And I wanna make sure that it's easy for y'all to do exactly that. I think so when you say what's the help, that's one thing that I think is definitely useful. So thanks for that question, that's a great question. Doggy, when you ask, can it get PRs, right now it's a Google Doc. And so it's an open Google Doc that you should be able to just make suggestions on. For right now, that's the mechanism. Uh, an open question is, would it be a better mechanism to put it into GitHub and make it a, make it a, a GitHub ticket every how often? If you think that you would be more likely to participate if it were structured in that way, then I'm happy to do that for future uh, uh, Bullhorn. Is the Bullhorn an actual working group on its own? Well, I mean, I guess it could be. Uh, does it need to be a full working group or does it need to just be a ticket? I think that's an open question because the, uh, it, the editorial process is really quite lightweight, um, and uh, hopefully it can stay that way where it's just people saying, hey, we want to contribute this stuff, and we say, yes, here you go. I suppose it maybe becomes a working group when someone besides me or someone on our team starts doing the editing, the actual editing and the actual writing, which is a possibility. Um, don't know if that's necessary yet, but it's certainly something we could do. And I think that Robin asked a good question, would PRs actually limit the potential aspiring contributors who aren't necessarily PR knowledgeable? If we were to use GitHub, I would, I, I think that well, so a couple of things. Number one, we can always just have an email address because that's what we have now. And I think that making sure that the email address is being responded to, and maybe the response is we've taken that and we've put it into the outline for next bullhorn and you can see that outline here and then it's a GitHub URL. I think that's probably okay. I don't think that I would ask people to have to fill in PRs because it's really just copy, it's just text, and I can cut and paste text out of an issue just as easily as I could merge a PR, probably more easily, in fact. Um, so, 
Gundalo's question, have you had many people email with content? Many, not many, but a few, two or three. Uh, and it's been good content. Uh, we're always looking for, you know, interesting stuff. And some of it is, to some degree, we have to figure out precisely what we want out of this because it can be, like, it can have a very narrow focus of what's going on in Ansible development. But if we were to do that, there are some weeks where it would just be, uh, you know, here are some IRC meeting logs, nothing much happened. And that might not be the most interesting content. So it may be that it's also useful to uh, point out interesting content in the wild, interesting blog posts that might be useful, things like that. I'm not sure what the full scope is yet. At the very least, I wanna make sure that it is useful for the Ansible developer community to follow. And I don't want to put in a bunch of extra stuff so that the signal to noise ratio goes down. Yes, repo and PR can definitely be more visible than Google Docs somewhere. Bear in mind, this is the first time we've actually had this public at all. So part of the point is to figure out uh, what visibility is that we want. And if we think that just, you know, so here's a question maybe we can have a quick vote on. Do we think that a good next step is to simply have a tracking uh, issue for the, the bullhorn in the Ansible community repo in much the same way that we do uh, collections or, or uh, working group meetings, things like that? Is that a good next step? Because I'm happy to do that. All right, I'm seeing at least two plus ones. Action myself here. Move outline of bullhorn six to Ansible community repo. Post that link. And then bullhorn. <laughs> All right, good enough. Okay. That's a useful thing we can do. Any other questions or comments? Question, where else could we promote the bullhorn? So where do we promote it now? We promote it on Twitter. Uh, Gundalo, I believe you post the link to uh, uh, Reddit. Uh, obviously, we could send an announce to Ansible Developationally and say, hey, uh, the latest bullhorn is out. We could do that on a regular basis. Any other good ideas for bullhorn promotion? For me, a large part, I, I'm not I'm not so worried about promotion too much because part of what promotes it is having a regular cadence and people just coming to it. The more people come to it, the more people will will know it's there, and we just promote it regularly on regular social channels and things like that. Where eyeballs actually come to these days, I don't know. Maybe we need a Snapchat. I, I don't know. So roles and responsibilities right now around the uh, the bullhorn. I generally put together the outline, pull together the content, do some lightweight writing uh, to basically put together the content itself, and then uh, Carol, Mark Phillips, who was who is on our team, was handling the logistics of it, but he's moving on, uh, and so Carol is picking up uh, the 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 job of basically. Uh, getting it into a uh, form for outbound email uh, and then promoting to various places. So there are probably, there's probably some promotion that we can make part of 
payroll's regular process. And then if there are things we want to do beyond that, of course, you don't we don't need you don't need our permission to promote the bullhorn. So any place you feel like talking about it, sending out information about it, the the more the better, I think. You know, this is also a great simple thing where we can just put together, you know, one of the one of the things about community management as a science is you're always looking for low entry ways to get people involved. And distribution of the uh of the bullhorn is the sort of thing you can build a, a street team of sorts, whatever you want to call it, uh, to get people knowing about the bullhorn. Um and talking about it in all kinds of places. So that that's a thing that we could actually do. We could be looking for the street team to get the word out around the bullhorn. Maybe yeah, but a lot of times word of mouth by the uh, community is more meaningful than just Ansible team trying to push it out. So. Right. We talk a lot about, uh, forgive the religious metaphor, but preaching inside the church and preaching preaching outside the church. I think we do a very good uh, a job, well, maybe not a very good, but we do a decent job of preaching inside the church. Like we talk Ansible to people we know who like Ansible. And we don't always do as good a job of preaching outside the church where, you know, we're taking Ansible and taking it to that are adjacent or aren't directly related um, or, or are closely related that we're not leveraging, right? So sending them out to the world of DevOps is a perfect example that I saw on, who, was, who said that on RSC, I guess it was, uh, uh, yeah, Soggy made a great point. There, there are DevOps communities that we could send this stuff out to. Um, I don't know about all those things. Y'all might. So if there's something that we can do to make it easier for you to promote the bullpen to these places, or there's a list that we wanna put together and maybe that's another thing that we put in this issue, a list of places that we promote this stuff. Good ideas. Robin, you still have Jim's email address, right? You can make this happen. He'll listen to you before he listens to me. I kind of yelled at him the last time we talked, actually. I mean, if we've got a good list of, if we've got, if we keep a good list of place that we send announcements to, then that can just become a part of the checklist of what we do. And that's a load that we can probably distribute beyond just Carol, right? If we've got a, if we decide over time that we've got a list of 20 places to promote the bullhorn that's useful, uh, you know, we can spread out and send those things, you know, take a, an hour out of out of every couple of weeks to all do the bits of promotion. We, that we could wanted. maybe even just write an Ansible playbook or something to just automate our. That's true. We have, to, we have to write. Imagine that. It could be automated. Very possible. We might need some help doing that. Does anyone here know Ansible? That would be useful. Anyway, now I'm just talking. Anyone have uh, uh, ooh Telegram channels? Nothing about any of this. Oh, and and uh, Gitter. But I do think, and some folks talked about, you know, can we just, you know, wholesale copy this, you know whole email to various lists, like, I think that's an option, but we should also weigh that against being able yep. to measure whether or not, you know, people are actually 
opening the mail and reading it and clicking on things and finding stuff useful, which becomes much harder when you just copy pasta it to an entire mailing list of like 50,000 people. That is, I agree with that. I I, I do not think, I think I don't don't think there's a problem with saying the next issue of this thing is out, go over here and read it. That is what we'll do. We will, not, we will not send the body of the email uh, around to these places. We will have an announcement that says, uh, "Here's the latest thing. Go, go, go! Read it and go subscribe to it." That's that's. I think that's the sensible thing. Yeah, that's the thing that helps us tune whether or not you know is it too short, too long, too wordy, too short, not informative, nobody cares. A lot more. They're scrolling and they're at the end and they're sad. All of that. Uh, and James mentioned in Blue Jeans chat. Here's a summary of topics discussed on IRC this week. Would be helpful. I don't know if that has made its way into the notes on IRC. And some of that could probably just be like, here's a, the standard list of where all the latest meeting notes from various meetings actually yeah. live. If you look at the outline, that's that's one of the always topics that goes at the top of the outline every week is a summary of the IRC things. Whether we do a good job of getting all of those is one thing, but uh, that certainly that is an intention. And that's pretty easy content to to generate, right? It's basically just look at the meeting logs, do a a little bit of copy pasta and a little bit of editing, and boom, boom, it's a bunch of content that's cheap, which is why I like it. Thanks, Daddy Shadow Man. Oh, well. Sorry, did I just reveal your past life? Yeah, I've done this before. There's a lot of this stuff we've done before. This was uh, once upon a time we had Red Hat Magazine, and I was Shadow Man, the printed. voice of Red Hat. It was printed on paper printed. and sent to I did not write for the print version. I wrote for the online version yeah. after we stopped doing the print version, but yes. Anyway, magazines, newsletters, et cetera, they're useful. Okay, so uh, I'll create a uh, community issue. Oh, Gundalo, did you already create a community issue? Actually, I'm looking now. Where do people discuss Ansible now? That's uh, okay. No, I, I don't think we we have one. Well, we might have a very old one about a newsletter, but I guess. Okay, it. I'll create I'll create the newsletter issue uh, here in the next day or two, and then uh, we can start. We can see what the useful thing is and. Put it all together. And then what will create a new issue for each? I don't know yet. Version? Don't know. Okay. That was going to say don't it would be yet. useful to. I suspect put. that we'll probably just have one and keep updating it, but if I don't you, know. If you have a thing included in this issue and. If the, the more places people have to go, the more likely they are to get lost, but maybe we end up having like a category of, I don't know, we need to make it easy for people to find, that's the big thing, and we'll figure out the best way to do that. We don't have to solve that here. I think it's okay to have one issue, because like the P- PR days is a long right. issue, but that's the model that I've been following. Yeah. One my little. only concern there is that there might, there is going to end up being an awful lot of content so in, in github you can hide comments once they've been addressed you can mark them as off topic or resolved or outdated which is what i do on pr days and what we do on the other agendas yeah. I, I, or they might get filed I, as sorry this is the wrong kind of content but wow you guys are giving us so much stuff that maybe we should have a user newsletter in addition to a developer newsletter yes too much content is always a problem we can solve. So I'd like to say hello to George, who has asked a question uh, in uh, the Blue Jeans, which is, I'm very new in Ansible. Questions related with AWX apply in this community, AWX and Ansible. 
So, uh, yes, we can and should have AWX updates in the Bullhorn. Uh, I don't, I think we have done at least one AWX announcement in like Bullhorn 3 or 4 or something. Um, so, uh, and yeah, this is a, you know, this would be a valid place to talk about AWX. We had an AWX topic uh, on board, but no one, no one was available to facilitate it. So we didn't talk about AWX this time, but we may talk about AWX at a at an upcoming uh, contributor uh, event. The next one of which will be co-located with Virtual Ansible Fest, I guess, in October. Okay, anything else? Any other questions? Any other comments, feedback? So clear so everyone's saying something on uh uh IRC right now. Hopefully, this is the kind of stuff uh, we just see pouring into the for the bull horn when it's uh, when it's ready for that. So I'll get that done in the next couple of days and talk about it everywhere we can. All right, if anyone wants to continue talking about, because how, how long do we have in the session, Carol? 13, uh, 12 more minutes. Okay, I'm at a stop. So um, if you all want to carry on, please do. Uh, thanks everyone for all of your bull, bullhorn help now and in the future. Thank you, Greg. The next session is in 12 minutes. Uh, we can first continue chatting on IRC, but uh, I'll set the uh, timer to come back in 12 minutes for the testing session. <laughs>